and you may start engines. All right, guys, welcome back to the channel here. We're in the Tolis A319. We're getting pushed back from the gate right now. Just take a moment to admire the texturing on this airplane. It is absolutely ast astonishing, especially in this light. We're in a Dallas-Fort Worth again. It's early evening. We're going to do a short flight over to Phoenix. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate a single-engine taxi. As we sit in the aircraft right now, you can see I have everything fired up. APU bleed is on. We're going to go ahead and start the first engine. Before we do that, we're going to run a B4 start checklist, which in the real world should be accomplished before pushing back from the gate. So. Before start checklist, windows, doors, and slides, they are closed and armed. Beacon, it is on. Thrust levers, idle. Parking brake is off. Transponder is in transponder, which is right here. Camera view. Transform before start checklist complete. Another thing I wanted to point out real quick, guys, as we get pushed back here from the gate, I mentioned in the last video that the all button was not working. I was incorrect. It is working. You have to press and hold, and it will cycle through your status pages. Operation complete. Set parking brake. All right. Brake is set clear. Disconnect. Show me the pin. Disconnecting tow. Stand by. So you press and hold to cycle these status pages. Now this is a feature that is implemented on the Airbus and the ones that I fly as well. However, we don't use it this way. We use it typically by uh, clicking it. And as you click it each time, it should cycle each page. So it's, it's correct, but there's also an added feature that's not quite implemented yet, which I'm sure will be fixed here really soon. But I just wanted to point it out that I did make a mistake and it is working. They did get it working to an extent. So uh, forgive me for that. All right, we have been pushed back. He is disconnecting. Just look at this sunset, guys. I can't get over looking at the outside of this aircraft. This is absolutely beautiful. Look at the dirt coming off the windows there. This is a 319. Always disconnected. I'm by fast and has been removed. Hand signal on the left. We'll see you next time and have a safe flight. All right, thank you for that. Let's go ahead and get this aircraft fired up. So we're gonna move that to ignition start. We have bleed pressure. Moving engine one start to start. I have been tweaking with my sound settings, guys. I know there's been a lot of discussion on the sound. One thing I didn't have enabled initially was this 3D sound fading. I do have it enabled now. I have noticed a, a bit of difference. Um, I keep tweaking these a little bit more. I like this external volume ratio option here. All right, so now that we have the aircraft started, we're gonna run an after start checklist for a single engine taxi procedure. So that goes back to normal arm the speed brakes, flaps come to one. And then another thing that we do here that may not do in the, in the sim world, but we'll go ahead and turn these intercoms on. And that's so the pilots can communicate together uh, with intercom. The reason we wanna make sure that the intercom is off when we're being pushed back is because this is actually a hot mic connection to the ground crew. So if you are saying some things you shouldn't be saying and you're hot mic into the ground crew, it could end up pretty bad for you. Set the trim for takeoff. Oops, put the trim for takeoff, and then we come back up to the overhead here. We're going to go ahead and turn the APU bleed off. We're going to leave the APU on, and we need to activate the yellow electric hydraulic pump. All right, so single engine taxi. Why would we want to single engine taxi an aircraft? A lot of times we do it for fuel. Actually, that's pretty much the main reason we do it is for fuel. We want to preserve fuel on the ground and we can do that by single engine taxiing. Also in the summertime, depending on what climate you fly in, um, especially if you're flying down in South America or even up here in North America in the deserts, Las Vegas is a big one. If you, in the summertime, it's extremely hot outside and a lot of the taxiways have slopes to them. And when you're even at idle thrust with both engines running, you're taxiing downhill. By the time you get to the runway, you're gonna have hot brakes because you just, sometimes it's unavoidable. So <clears throat> we like to single engine taxi, reduce the thrust, even though you're at idle, you still have that idle thrust pushing the airplane. And if you're, especially if you're light and you have two inches running, you're just gonna be cooking along that taxiway and gating hot brake situation. So we'll single engine taxi. 
So what we need to do after the single engine, to get our single engine uh, taxi going here, we'll bring up our hydraulics page. And what we need to do is go ahead and activate the yellow electric hydraulic pump. Because engine two is not running, the engine driven hydraulic pump is not running. But we want our yellow hydraulics for our brakes. So a way we do that is go ahead and turn on the yellow electric pump. Now what's really cool is if I turn off the yellow electric pump and you watch it depressurize, the PTU will take over and pressurize the yellow system. And by pressurize, there is no transfer of fluids between these systems. So don't, don't think that it's just taking, pre taking hydraulic fluid from the green and putting it in the yellow. It's a power transfer unit, very complex. All you need to know is that it will take pressure from the green system and pressurize the yellow system as well. So we can actually observe this. If I release the parking brake, there you go. And you hear that PTU in the back, you are probably very familiar with that sound. That's the power transfer unit constantly updating pressure to make sure that we have the yellow hydraulic system pressurized. To maximize passenger comfort, we go ahead and turn on the yellow electric pump to stop that. And that is where you get that sound all the time. All right, so we're set up for single engine taxi here. After start checklist, engine anti-ice is off, yellow electric pump is on, rudder trim zero and reset. Taxi check is complete, brakes off, taxi light coming on. And now what we'll do is a brake check. We want to make sure that when we step on the brakes, we, aircraft has reverted to normal braking law. And when we do that, we should not see any brake pressure here on the accumulator gauge. So I'm applying the brakes, no change. That means that the brakes are in normal mode and they are working correct. One thing to take note when you're single engine taxi and you want to make sure you have forward momentum before you start trying to turn. It can be very difficult in the sim and in real life if you don't have that momentum, especially if you're making a turn into the operating engine. So my left engine is on. If I were to make a hard left 90, uh, it's actually much harder to turn into the operating engine. See, as I'm taxiing up onto the bridge here, and quite a bit of power <laughs> in real life. We actually plan for this. I should have thought about it. When we have to go up that hill, across the bridge, we just go ahead and start both engines because it's sometimes very difficult to get one engine up and over that hill, especially if you're heavy. Another thing I want to point out that I think is really well done in this 319 model is these floodlights here. So in a lot of the newer aircraft, these floodlights are being replaced with uh, LED bulbs and they're much more white in color. I actually don't like them. I think the old school yellow is more satisfying to the eyes in real life and in the sim and they've got it modeled here very very nicely so cool little touch that kind of captures that old school what are they incandescent bulbs uh, really nice touch there so our limitation is 50 I believe it's 40 percent n1 when ground taxiing All right, we need two minutes of warm-up time after we start the second engine. So let's go ahead and run the second engine start. 
first things we gotta do is yellow electric pump is comes off. APU bleed comes back on. We gotta make sure you turn that APU bleed on. Engine mode to ignition start. Now, for some reason, I'm noticing whenever I flip back, sometimes sometimes it works, sometimes it does. Sometimes I don't get the engine page here. I'm not sure if that's a bug or maybe something that I'm missing, but we'll uh, go ahead and flip it back over to the engine page. We have bleed pressure, and we will go ahead and start engine number two. You can hear the electronic power transfer. All right, we have an avail indication. Go ahead and start the clock. We need two minutes of warm-up time. APU bleed can come off. APU master switch off. That will go ahead and shut down the APU. Run an after start checklist. All right, so now we would do a flight control check. Go ahead and pull this up. Pull up, pull down, neutral, pull left, pull right, neutral. <laughs> if you haven't seen my previous video, what happens when the flaps are extended on the ground, the ailerons into the droop, they go what's called aileron droop, and it creates a little extra lift. Also on the landing, the ailerons will uh, elevate up a little bit to act as kind of a little bit of a spoiler to help with aircraft landing performance. Also you notice when I go left aileron, right aileron, the ailerons stop at the bottom of that white box. That is part of the minimized deflection while the aircraft is on the ground. So we wanna make sure that that is working properly, and it is. Just to add to the discussion on the ailerons, you can see now with the flaps in the up position, how they are at their neutral position and not drooped as like they were when the flaps were extended. There goes the flaps, there goes the droop, Another beautiful simulation. One quick note here, guys. I, um, I know I mentioned in one of the first videos I did that if you could have ground vehicles associated with the door actions that TOLIS has configured, and somebody brought to my attention that if you use the default uh, X-Plane vehicles such as Left Shift G, you can request, request ground services as I did here a while ago, and they do go ahead, they do uh, drive up, and go to their correct positions on the aircraft. So that is awesome. We've talked about little things, making an aircraft stand out from other aircraft. That's another thing that I really love. Also, as we sit here, observing this aircraft, never mind the uh, ghost tug driving around, that's an X-plane thing. Um, just admire the texturing on this airplane. And it's up there. I mean, you can see, look at the details on the tail, like the wear, the rivets, you know, you've got your trim reset here. Small things, guys, make a big difference. And I am becoming more and more impressed with this TOLIS aircraft as I fly it around. Even these little notches here on the wing, that is, that is correct. You've got your knack of ducks, overflow vent here for the fuel tank. Very nicely done, very nicely done. And take a look at that engine. Also very nicely done. Alright guys, thank you for watching this video. It's going to wrap it up for us today. If you stuck around this long, I hope that you learned something and that you are enjoying the content. I'm going to throw this video into a little series of videos called the Airbus Pilot Series, and it's going to outline a couple of different procedures that aren't most commonly used, uh, maybe especially to, for those of you that aren't professional aviators. Um, you could start doing some of these little techniques like single engine taxiing and applying those to your virtual flying career. So I hope this helps you guys and I'm going to continue to upload content. It is probably going to slow down as we approach the Christmas holiday here. Um, I'm going to be taking some vacation, but I wish everybody a Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, a Happy New Year, and I will see you all very soon on the next video.